So our sample is starting off at a, I set the temperature to 132. Uh, our predicted melt point is 133 to 136. And so far our sample is sitting solid. This is good. You can actually see it warping a little at the moment. Well, sorry about that, but um, are we still going a degree a minute or? We are. We are going a degree a minute. And so that warping began at 134 this time. We are currently at 135 Celsius. Okay, I believe we're, we're seeing now the solid con condensing down. I'm going to go ahead and rotate the sample just to ensure. Uh, there we go. It is now liquid. Okay, our temperature is 136, so our range for our pure is 134 to 136 degrees Celsius. Okay, students, our last analysis for this experiment is the ferric chloride test, and so I'm going to deliver one milliliter of ferric chloride solution into my four test tubes. Okay, so now that I have my ferret chloride all set up, if you notice here I have my test tubes labeled, and so water is going to be our blank, so I'm going to go ahead and add a drop of water to the water sample. And it's just so that we will know what a, a negative will look like, so just a couple drops of water, and so I will hold it up so that you can see the color here. And I'll use my blue glove as a background, so it has kind of a slightly yellow color. Um, pretty opaque here, not not too much going on, so a slight yellow color again. Okay, uh, to my second sample, I'm going to use our starting material. Remember our starting material was the acetaminophen, so I'm going to use my micro spatula. Now, the acetaminophen is a phenol, so once we get this solution to dissolve, we, we may see a little bit of a color change. Okay, so we'll set this aside and allow it to uh, react. Okay, our next compound is salicylic acid. This is also a phenol compound, so again, I'm going to add a small sample to the test tube. Ah, and if you notice here, salicylic acid is pr producing a very, very dark red, almost purple color. And last but not least, we have phenacetin, so the compound that we synthesized. So again, I'll use my micro spatula here to deliver a small little bit of solid from our synthesized compound. Okay. And you can see that I have a solid, uh, you know, uh, because the solution is water-based, these compounds may not dissolve very well. Okay, now I'm going to line these up so that we will be able to see what's going on here. And take a look at our different compounds. Now you can see that water uh, remained very yellowy. Uh, and that's what we expect since ferric chloride originally is a yellow compound. Uh, the acetaminophen is still in the process of converting here. And so uh, if you notice, you do get a little bit of a, a, a slight kind of purple tinge. It, it almost looks like a gray, uh, but remember that gray does contain purple within. Okay, for the salicylic acid, we do have a nice dark coloration going. And lastly, for phenacetin, we do not see a color change. Okay, so what I can do also is place the phenacetin next to the water so it becomes easier to see the difference uh, between these compounds here. So if you notice the acetaminophen and the phenacetin do not have the same color. It might be a little difficult because of the green background of the test tube rack but they do not show the same color. Okay, in this segment we are taking a look at the uh, thin layer chromatography. We will be testing acetaminophen, which was our starting material, and uh, also our phenacetin, which is our product. So our product is still right here on the uh, watch glass. 
Uh, I dissolved a little bit of solid that had been left behind here in the crib tube to use as my sample for TLC. Okay, so I'm going to take my capillary tube and dip it in to collect a little bit of liquid. And I have pre-labeled my uh, TLC plate here with my two compounds, so I'll go ahead and place it down on the appropriate spot. So that was the phenacetin sample. And for the acetaminophen, I took a small uh, sample of the solid and dissolved it in a test tube with a little bit of acetone. So again, I will take my clean capillary tube, collect some liquid. Okay, so they uh, both now have the appropriate amount of spots. My resolution chamber has ethyl acetate as, it's, as the TLC solvent. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Use a pair of forceps to move my sample into the chamber here. I'll twist it this way so students will have an easier time seeing what is occurring. Okay, and we'll let that liquid travel on up the TLC plate uh, and we'll take a look under UV light. So our sample is ready to be removed. I'm going to go ahead and mark the solvent front with a pencil here. Ah, wonderful. Okay. So let me line it up so students can see the labels here. So on the left we have acetaminophen, on the right we have phenacetin. So if you notice our uh, phenacetin has moved a little further up in terms of uh, RF versus our acetaminophen. I'm going to go ahead and place a ruler here and the correct positioning so that students will be able to generate an RF value. So our solvent front looks to be about 4.8 centimeters and I'm going to go ahead and go from the bottom of each spot for accuracy here. So I'm going to do a quick mark. Okay, and so for our phenacetin compound it looks like our RF value would be 2.4 centimeters and for acetaminophen we would have a value of two centimeters. I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Okay, so all of these values written down are in centimeters. Again, for our acetaminophen, we have a value of two centimeters. For phenacetin, we have 2.4 centimeters. And our solvent front gave us a value of 4.5 centimeters. Okay, so this is our uh, infrared of the product of phenacetin. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of sample to our infrared machine. And I'm using my spatula to help guide my solvent onto the crystal here. Okay, and now I can go ahead and click on. Okay, it looks like our scans are done here. I'm going to go ahead and start taking a look at our sample. Okay, that should be good. I'll go ahead and post this data up onto our website. And for our final uh, information that you'll need for this experiment, I'll have uh, we pan over to our document so that you guys can see all of the information that you'll need for the synthesis of the NASA tip.